All right, we have other big things to discuss based on what happened Thursday night. Has John Calipari coached his last game at Kentucky? The fan base is out. They're done. This is, they're, they're, they're finished with him. The question is, what, what does Mitch Barnhart think? The AD at Kentucky. Longest tenured AD in the, in the SEC. What do the deep-pocketed donors, the ones who actually have to write checks if this is going to happen, what do they think? We're going to find out. Ed Keeley in the chat. John Calipari want to start, might want to start traveling to practice with security. Well, that would assume that he's going to coach another practice at Kentucky, and I'm not sure that's going to happen. We bring on James Fletcher III on three's resident bracketologist. James, Oakland beats Kentucky. Greg Campy, 40 years as the Golden Grizzlies coach, his first win in the NCAA tournament proper. They won a play-in game a few years ago. But this is a massive one because – Kentucky fans were already pretty ambivalent on Cal. Had not made the second week in the NCAA tournament since 2019. They're all the way done now. Yeah, I think it was even bigger than just the biggest loss of the day in the NCAA tournament. It was a referendum on what the John Calipari era has become at Kentucky. The last few years, they have not had NCAA tournament success. And a lot of pressure was put on this team. We talked about with this group of talent that he brought in, he needed to have at least a second weekend run probably to keep that fan base happy, to keep the boosters happy, to keep everyone happy there, including himself and all of his players, because there are expectations at Kentucky that have been set not only during his tenure, but over the course of almost a hundred years of history with different coaches through different eras. And so for him to have this kind of failure again in the NCAA tournament, the fan base, of course, is ready for change and they're going to make a lot of noise here. It's going to happen. And I think that more so than anything, what last night's uh, loss showed and you, you heard about, you heard about, you heard him talk about it in the post game was this idea that John Calipari loves coaching a young team. He wants all of these future NBA stars. He wants the freshmen, the five stars. and He, he wants, wants to, to help the kids, up. James. He's helped these kids. Yes. If, he, if he coaches 21-year-olds, then he's not helping kids. Right. That's what he told us last night. <laughs> that, was, that was the funniest one. You want to sneak in those tournament games at work. You want to watch them at home. You want to watch them on the go because maybe somebody's got a honey-do list that you've got to deal with this weekend. Prime Video has you covered. Watch every game live on your phone, on your laptop, or at home with Prime Video with a subscription. Now, what you do is you add on through Prime Video the Max subscription and the Paramount Plus subscription. All of those would then be contained in your Prime Video app under one password, easy to get to, easy to pop up wherever you are. And oh, by the way, yeah. You'd also get to watch the new Roadhouse. That's right. The Jake Gyllenhaal Roadhouse. No, I don't think it's sacrilege. I think we need to introduce a new generation to Dalton and the fact that pain don't hurt. So yes, basketball games, Roadhouse. Prime Video has you covered. Click the link in the show description of this show, either on YouTube or on your favorite podcast platform. It'll take you where you need to go. You can get all signed up. And then you can watch the replays even if the refs can't. Yeah, it was pretty terrible. And I get it. I get wanting to go get the five-star. It's fun. It's fun to coach the five-star kids. But if that doesn't win basketball games, then at what point do you have to change? And he's showing a hesitance to change which is going to make this an even more interesting conversation as we talk about the future of John Calipari at Kentucky and the future of John Calipari in college basketball, where the trend has gone to older players and to more transfer portal driven success than it is recruiting trail and one and done guys. Yeah. So John in the chat goes, just going for your title, $33 million buyout. I don't see how they fire Cal. John, 
you'd realize we live in a world where Jimbo Fisher is a person who exists. An SEC school just paid $77 million to fire a coach. And, I, and don't give me, oh, that's football. This is Kentucky. When it's basketball somewhere else, yeah, you don't compare it to football. When it's basketball at Kentucky, you compare it to football. And Kentucky has lots of money. They're about to get a bigger cash infusion for the new SEC TV deal. They're about to get a bigger cash infusion for the new college football playoff contract. They've got Mark Stoops locked up. He's he Remember, he almost replaced Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M, but he didn't. He's probably not going anywhere at that salary. They've actually probably priced him out of getting another job. But I think that the people who do this, and John Rothstein, who's a great college basketball reporter, he he said this last night. He's like, they had to pay him almost $34 million. Who would do that? Well, an SEC school would do that. Like, let me explain the buyout math. Because everybody who watches this show is a college football fan. So they understand buyout math a lot better than basketball people understand buyout math. College football people understand when you're looking at a buyout, there are certain things you look at. Is there anything due up front? Or do you get to pay it evenly over the, the rest of the deal? Also, is there offset language? So if the person gets another job, does the salary from the new job get taken off the total? Jimbo Fisher, I'll give, I know I keep using this example, but it's fresh in my mind. Yeah. Jimbo Fisher had no offset. He gets to keep all of that $77 million, whether he gets another job or not. John Calipari does not have that in his contract. John Calipari has an offset in his contract. I went and read through it last night. If John Calipari were to get another job, and presumably he's going to get a competitive salary job, so let's say he gets a $3 million a year job. That comes off the total. Here's the other piece of it. So I realize I keep using Texas A&M football coaches for this example, but <laughs> these are the most egregious examples I can think of. Kevin Sumlin, when he got fired at Texas A&M, his entire buyout was due within 60 days. So when they fired him, it was $15 million bucks. So they, paid, they wrote him a $15 million check within 60 days. John Calipari's buyout, none of it is due up front. Like Jimbo Fisher had a big chunk of it due up front. I believe it was $20 million right off the rip that was due up front. John Calipari does not have that at all. It is due in equal installments, paid monthly through the life of the contract. So through 2029. That is incredibly doable. It's like $6 million bucks a year. And if he gets another head coaching job, you can knock $3 million a year off of it. Like, all the SEC and he's like, this is easy. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.